What's up, everybody? Welcome to Narco Cop MMA, and this is the Lambo Plays Podcast, episode 90, UFC, Atlantic City. I'm your host, Mike, along with my co-host, Timothy Troiano. Timothy, 14 fight card. Um, some really good fights on this card. Not not very bad for a non-pay-per-view card. Um, do you have some hot takes on this card? Do you have any uh any Lambo uh, parlays that are gonna hit this week? God, I hope so, man. I hope we hit one of these Lambo parlays. We've been we've been close. So uh yeah, I mean I can't wait to chop it up. We got some I love the main event in this fight or the main event fight. I think it's fucking awesome. Both fighters have been um very profitable for for me personally so aaron brent blanchfield's like the she's probably like number one to three on my most profitable fighters so yeah i can't wait for it yeah aaron Branch blanchfield has been a money train for almost everybody i think like any not me i don't think i've bet her that often but um yeah i've had, two, of- I've had two uh two times where i've better in max bets and then one time i had two max bets in one fight with her so yeah I mean, a bunch of people have bet her and, and, um, yeah, she's been on fire, obviously. So props to her. Um, with that being said, let's go over to our chat and it's Joshua Frick best part of Friday after crushing last weekend, Tim living by the hook last night. going to be great live betting this weekend. What is up Dixon narco Tim this week? We have a triple threat. Only fans fade Anton Turkulich, Bill Algio and Dennis Bazooka. This is the hottest angle in MMA right now. Don't fade the OnlyFans fade. You know the deal. Dumpy, keep grinding, boys. Respect and love the work you all put in. Thank you, my man. JJ, going to have to sub to the Discord before UFC 300. I just dropped the 25% off if you do want to join. Gamblestein, hello, friends. And Tim, what is up, my man? Leafs fan. Thanks for the Talbot round two KO last week. You guys are awesome. That was, yeah, that made my week, actually. It was a great play. Uh, There will be blood. Lambo plays. Let's go, my friend. Bufu on the beat. Good evening, fam. Good to see you all. Thank you, my man. Craig Crowley. Let's cash these tickets. Thank you, Joel. Appreciate it, my friend. Feeling this might be the week we get rich. That would be very nice. Match predictions. What is up, my man? Let's effing go. Alfonso, let's go. Mushroom says smash the like. Listen to the man. St. Stephen. Cheers, everyone. Give me those sweet, sweet whisper bets. Yes, sir. We're going to, I might have a whisper bet this week, actually. BMC, let's effing go. Dim, Tim DePetris, first time here. Let's get that bread. Appreciate you. Welcome to the show, my man. Felix P, what is up? Uh, Mr. Ozzy Willow Bink, he says. Bink, what are we going to bink? We don't know, but we're going to find the bink. Victor De Jesus, what's good, my friend? Thank you for joining. Andre Ace, hi. Let's go, my man. Kiwi Brew, what is up, my man? Thank you. For being here as well. DA07, Timothy is destined for a nasty parlay to cash. I feel it in my bones, he says. Chronic Combat, love this show always. The best props. Thank you for joining my man. I was on their show this week. So go over to their YouTube and watch that show. Um, Two good guys. Asher, thanks for dropping the content as always. Appreciate you, my man. 112 people are live here right now, Tim. And we will start out because we got 14 fights to go through and in the first fight of the night it is the seven and two angel pacheco fighting the eight and one kalen logren in the bantamweight division what do you have here for your lambo play all right so i am gonna go with kaolan by submission at plus 750 and if you want to get greasy with it you can do sub two or sub three is plus 2400 plus 3400 um I think he's a better grappler. Uh, I think he's a much better wrestler. Uh, I feel like the stand up for him versus Pacheco. I think Pacheco is like extremely hittable, but I do feel like uh, Colin is is kind of plotting and not super crisp with his striking. He's kind of hittable himself, uh, not super fast. Um, so I feel like his best and easiest path in this fight is to wrestle and get uh, Pacheco out of his element. Pacheco's most mainly a uh, boxer. Um, doesn't really like to grapple super, uh, not really a great grappler, honestly. So I feel like, um, I feel like the submission price is, is pretty solid at plus 750 um, on Bet Rivers. And I, I just think that he's going to grapple him. And I think that he's going to probably, it's probably going to be like a ground and pound setup to like a rear, like a turns his back and then gets, gets the neck and just 
you know, he probably beats him down and in, into, and I think that also Pacheco is pretty durable and he's take, he can take a, a beating. So I think he'll probably just be one of those guys where you're like, Oh, he's just going to take the beating until he taps and he does, he's not going to get him KO'd. But so I, I think that the sub at plus uh, seven fifty is a solid line. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind it. I, I like those sub two, three, not bad. Um, yeah. I kind of agree with some, some parts of what you said, but man, this freaking guy Pacheco is so tough. Like, watch all these tape on him and you know he's a pretty decent grappler as well i think he's a brown belt like when he gets taken down he just works to get back up real quick um kind of knows what he's doing down there to be honest and and then on the feet is where you know he's kind of a a punching bag right he gets hit a lot on the feet man it's it's not good you know he got hurt he got dropped in regionals um but He's very, very tough, man. We saw Danny Silva absolutely put it on him, put the house on this poor guy, and and he just wouldn't go away, man, and he fought back. So, you know, watching Logren, I kind of don't feel like his striking is anywhere near Danny Silva's, but he throws pretty hard. I don't think he's – I don't think he has as much power as Silva, to be honest. So, you know, he might land takedowns. I think he wins rounds there. You know, I mean, sub is, I, I guess, live as well. But kind of lean decision here, man. Uh, this guy's just shown extreme toughness, whether it be in his uh, amateur career or his professional career. I mean, Angel Pacheco, just extremely hard to finish, man. Like, he's got a ton of of fights in in uh, in the amateurs as well. And this guy just, he's never been finished, man. So um, kind of riding the wave here. And, and I believe Ra- Logren is going to win the minutes pretty easily, especially via grappling and landing takedowns. So. Logren decision plus three ten. It's right there on the cusp. Um, I don't mind it. I, I I think he's he's live to win a decision here. Pacheco kind of punked the Irish kid at faceoffs when Pacheco started freaking out. The Irish kid stuck out his hand for a handshake. Just ah, I don't pay too much attention to that man because it, it's hard to read. Narco, remember we said the same about Fernie Garcia being tough versus Hyder Emil, and he got wrecked. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, yeah, I mean you're right. I did. I, I'm actually the one that said that. And, and yeah, I mean, it, it could, he could get wrecked here by Logren. I mean, Logren's yeah, way he was, I mean, to, to, to your credit, I mean, like he was tough as shit and he lasted in that fight where most of the guys would have been finished on the first few shots. And he was on extremely short notice. And once he death gassed in that fight, it was completely over. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I, he's right about it though. You know, he, I got to give him credit. Like I did think he was going to survive Emil. Um, but I kind of feel like too. Hamil Emil is more of a spaz too, dude. Like he's oh. a complete spaz. Uh, Logren is not really a spaz. He tries to set up his shots. You know, he's a little more technical. But yeah, let's move on. Fight number two. It is in the middleweight division. It is the ten and two Andre Petrosky versus the seven and three Jacob Malkoon. Um, I was kind of going back and forth on this one because I do think Petrosky is live in round one, like per usual. But I'm going to go with Jacob Malkoon, 2-3 here, 900, 1100. Um, I just think he has the much better cardio. Um, uh, I believe, what's his name, is taking this on a, on a short notice, isn't he? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's not He's not on I, short notice? I don't know. I'm unsure on that. Yeah, no, actually, it's a full camp. It's a full camp. Um but yeah, I, I mean, Petrosky is just the, no, a guy that's known to kind of tire um, against guys that will actually put on a pace. And I think I do think Malkoon puts on a pace. You know, he's going to put on a not any type of like striking pace, but he's going to continue to grapple, continue to go to a single leg, trip takedown, you know, come on top and make you freaking work. And that's something that, you know, um, what's his name? Doesn't do very well, Petrosky. So, you know, he, I know he's a very good grappler, but you're going to continue to do that to him and make him grapple like crazy like he's probably going to tire out he tired out against Mearshot in round three almost got finished and i was sweating bullets because i had him there and he was up 2-0 and i was like oh no please don't get finished um and he was holding on for dear life so malcoon 2-3 900 1100 he's not the biggest finisher that's the problem i have with this bet but he definitely has um the much better cardio here what do you have here tim yeah, I, I kind of lean the exact same way. I, I think that it honestly, I think it's probably Malcoon by decision, but that's a shit, like, it's a shit line. Um, 
But yeah, I do think that it's like the win condition for uh, Petrosky is within the first seven minutes of the fight. And then after that, it's pro- the takedowns will probably come a lot easier for Malkoon. I think like if you're, if Petrosky, if you're on Petrosky, I don't, I don't hate the the round one at plus eight fifty or the, the sub, the sub one is, is definitely uh, something that I think he could catch him similar to the Maximoff. I think he could catch him on one of those single legs where, I mean, Malkoon, that's all he does. He does the same fucking move every time you single leg, puts his head to the side and tries to run, you run the ta- you know, run the pipe on you. Um, so I do think that the the squeeze on uh, Petrosky is is solid and his jiu-jitsu is solid. And I think his wrestling is even solid in the beginning of a fight. So, um, but I agree with you. I think that Petrosky has has moments where, you know, in the Ryan Battle fight, he broke. In the Jer- Aaron Jeffrey fight, he broke. Um, only in the Pereira fight when he came in, basically off of vacation, did he not, did he break like instantaneously? So I think the round two, round three aren't bad. I, I do think that they probably lose. I do think that he probably wins a decision, but, but we'll take a, we'll take a shot on him. He was more aggressive on the ground against Brundage. Obviously it got him the DQ, but like he was way more aggressive in that position than he normally was. So hopefully he goes for the, the yeah. finish. Us. He landed a lot of uh, ground and pound there, which normally he doesn't really throw that much. I totally agree. Um, yeah. And then we have uh, match predictions asking, Kale, I don't know, man. I think it could be both if it happens. Totally. You know, I think it could be definitely both. I would lean KO because he just he's had moments against certain fighters where he could yeah. he could like go in his different positions and like in advance and he just doesn't really do it. So I th- I, I lean that he would go for more for ground and pound. Yeah, I agree. Probably more ground and pound. But but we, the, the thing, the problem with Petrosky is like when he death gasses and he's like, He'll yes. just like he gives up his neck. He's like, okay, I'll, 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 uh, I'll just, I'll just give in. You know what I'm saying? I'll just, I'll just, I'll just get choked or, or what was that against battle? Was it a ninja choke or something? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah guillotine. I think. Yeah, it was. It was pretty bad, bro. Like, so, um, I don't know. I it could be anything. Honestly, I don't want to uh, steer you one way or the other, but yeah, I, I think it could be anything, uh, KO or sub. Um, but like Tim said, maybe ground and pound more than likely if it happens. Moving on, fight number three. It is in the flyweight division. It is the 8-2-2, two and two, Melissa Gatto versus the 8-0, no, Victoria Dudakova. And this one's yours, Tim. All right, so yeah, this fight is interesting. Uh, Dudakova is moving up weight because she missed weight her last fight. Um, usually a 115-er. Uh, now she's going up to 125. I didn't see the face-offs. Was she smaller by a decent amount? Yeah, I mean, I I think it's a tough fight for her, to be honest. Um, I think Gatto has her – I think Gatto has her not covered everywhere by a lot, but covered everywhere by enough. Um, I think the striking for Gatto is cleaner. cleaner. I feel like she's going to be physically strong enough. The only problem that I see with Gatto is that she can sometimes, when she gets taken down, she can play off of her back a little bit. But in this fight, like – I mean, I don't know that the takedowns are going to be easy for Dudakova, Dudakova as well as Dudakova was taken down by uh, Jinyu Frey, who's just a fucking 105er that's up in 115 because there's no weight, there's no fights at 105 for UFC. So that to me was like a horrible, horrible look for Dudakova that she's on her back, can't like a significant amount of time versus Frey, who's just. And then, and then the thing too is that like Ginny Frey doesn't wrestle the rest of the fucking fight. You're just like, what are you doing? Like you're you just had her down, and then you're gonna strike with her. And so to me, I thought that that fight was a gigantic red flag uh, on the Dudakova side. Now she's going up in weight. She's gonna be fighting somebody that's, um, I think, a cleaner striker, and I definitely a much better jujitsu player. And so to me, I feel like if Gatto gets her down. Uh, the sub is going to be really alive. And even if Gatto, I could even see a guard sub in this situation from Gatto. I think that she could g- catch an arm bar, catch her in making a mistake uh, and, and just and sub her from her back as well. I think the sub is live if the fight hits the ground really at any point. So uh, plus 420 on Gatto sub. Um, don't have a lean on the rounds. The rounds are all right on the late rounds are 1300 and 1700 for sub. But I just think the sub plane is just plus 420 is not terrible. Yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you. That's my play. It's 420. Where's that? I got 410. I seen, but um, it was. Yeah. I think it's it's gone down since I think. Okay. It's yeah, 420. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. Like Dudakova on the ground, like she gets takedowns, but I've seen her in like really bad spots. Like 
Her grappling is not polished on there. Meanwhile, Gato, I mean, she is dangerous on there. Like, she subbed Carol Hosa um, in the regionals. Like, she's a dangerous girl down there. She'll threaten subs. The thing that you kind of stated here is I think that the power, the, the strength advantage is, is, I believe, going to be on Gato's side. And, you know, this girl moving up a weight class fought Frey and looked did not look strong against Frey. You know, I she had staff apparently in her, I don't know which area, but. Um, in, her, uh, in her bungus, yes. Yeah, and, and that wasn't good. Obviously, that probably zapped her energy, zapped her power. So I don't know what to make of that. But what I can actually take from regional tape is that she gets fights to the ground, but she gets reversed. She gets taken down a lot of times. There was one fight, I don't remember. She was trying to get a takedown. She literally got boom, right on her back. Like She doesn't look very strong. That's my thing. And Gato seems like she's very strong. So if this fight hits the ground, which I believe will, just because of how Dudakova fights, right? she's going to try to get the fight to the ground, plus 420, you know, um, or 410, whatever, whatever it is. I, I, I think that's a good price on, uh, Melissa Gatto by sub. And, and, you know, she does have four wins by submission. So, um, she can't finish there. Moving on fight. Number four, it is in the light heavyweight division. It is the 12 and one Ebo Aslan versus the eight and three Anton Turkelich. I mean, I have to play Turkelich two, three, even though I don't like him in this spot, I think he probably gets destroyed early. But I have to play it like I, I've Aslan, you know, he's been three rounds, got finished. He finished somebody, but man, he looks death gas, bro. He does really look tired. Maybe, you know, he's a little bit better now. I don't know. I'm going to have to just try to fade it with these numbers at 800, 1300, you know, on Turkelich. I, I, I hate Turkelich. I don't think he's very good. He is, does seem tough. I don't know. You know, last time against Pedro, he got killed, but it's not easy to kill the guy. Look at the Petrino fight, man. It's not really that easy to kill him. So um, these guys fought before. I don't know why they're making this matchup outside of trying to get Aslan maybe a, a, a revenge win here in the UFC. But I'm going to go 2-3, 1300 Tim. Yeah, I was just coin flipping this one to me. I think it's the same way. I just feel like it's early Ebo and late Anton um, for the exact same reasons of what you said. But to me... I just think it kind of – I'm going with Evo. KO1 is is a used Corolla. It's plus 200. KO2 is plus 900. I just think that – I think Anton's chin is starting to break, and I feel like he the damage that he took in the Petrino fight, it's like you you get the, the Tyson-Pedro fight, and that, that's like this guy was just put to death's door, and then Tyson-Pedro just go, hey, come on in, like one shot, and you're fucking dead. So I also think in the first fight – there was uh, multiple times where I think that those shots, like that was when his chin and he was more durable against Ebo. And I just don't know that that's going to be, I think if he hits him with probably the same shots, I think he probably gets him out in the first two rounds. Yeah. I mean, but if he doesn't, if he doesn't, I, I totally think I agree with you. If he doesn't get him out in the first seven minutes, he's probably getting finished himself in two or three. That, so that's the thing. That That's my thing. If he doesn't, that's. Uh, could be a really good live spot. That Yeah. Um. All right, let's move on. Fight number five. It is in the featherweight division. It is the seven and one Connor Matthews versus the eleven and four Dennis Bazooka. This one's yours, Tim. I vomited doing tape on this fight a bunch of times. Actually, I had multiple throw ups when I was when taping this fight. Uh, Matthews seems to seems to be fighting just absolute trash cans and tomato cans, and um is able to kind of grapple some of them and just get him down and get his, get his game off. But bazooka for me too, has been a, I've just been fading this guy of almost every single fight. So um, it's like, you know, movable, uh, a stoppable force versus movable object, you know, like it's just, this is not a, this is not a good fight. Um, I'll take the end split here, hoping that this is a close fight, but I, I think, I think bazooka is more talented by a little bit. Um, probably physically stronger, so the takedowns will probably be tough, and then it's just going to be an ugly striking fight. So I'll, I'll take and split at plus four hundred, but I have zero interest in this fight. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna go here on the Matthew side, man. I have a bet on him pre. I just feel like he might be a little bit better everywhere. To be honest, I think he's a better striker. I think he's probably the better grappler. Um, 
He's tougher in my. I know people say Bazooka is tough. I think Connor Matthews is tougher, man. Those New England cartel guys, they're fucking something else. I mean, look at them. Rob Font, Calvin Cater. This guy's there with them. He's just as tough, man. And he and he talks about how they preach toughness in that gym. That's all they preach. A lot of toughness. And they're all very tough. The the thing is, he's fought very low level of opposition, but man, was I impressed against Farius. Farius is a fighting nerd. He's extremely dangerous. He landed some huge shots in Dana White's contender series. This guy took them and just kept coming and coming. Um, and he landed his, himself some big bombs on Farius, and Farius took them as well. I I kind of feel like Bazooka might not be able to take those bombs, man. Um, I'm going via KO here, man. I, I know no one's really mentioned this, but 750 Matthews KO is what I'm going to go. I don't rate Emmers as a big puncher, and he landed a flush right and just put him out, man. I, I you know, I, I have to say this guy's chin always has looked pretty good, but it did not look good in that fight. And, and I agree a, there. That's a good point. It was a one punch, and and – so I'm going to take Matthews KO plus 750. I think he throws from the hip. Um, he's tough. And um, yeah, it should be a great fight, though. Let's move on. Fight number six. It is in the Bantamweight division. I'm sorry, in the Featherweight division. It is the 18 and six. Julio Arce versus the 11 and four G Herbert Burns. And I will kick this one off. Sub one, Tim, on Herbert Burns. 1,400 on bet 365. Um. Man, that's how he usually wins. He threatens these subs big time in round one. I'm going to go with round one sub here, man. Arce missed weight. He weighed himself twice, couldn't make it, went up in weight somehow. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it could be a good thing. Maybe he missed weight. He didn't want to drain himself. I don't know. But I think both guys coming off knee surgery, both guys being a little older, obviously um, Burns is extremely dangerous early. So if you're going to give me this sub one at 1,400, I'm going to have to take a shot. And I know Arce is very good on the ground. Um, but I think Burns is a, a, a bit better down there. So sub one plus 1,400 Gilbert Burns. I mean, Herbert Burns. Sorry. Uh, yeah, he is definitely the dollar store Burns uh, here. So I, I feel like um, I feel like it's like a bet that I'll probably put like 0.2 units on that prop on – burn sub one and then i'll probably sprinkle like 0.4 and 0.4 on uh our say round two and round three um and just even take the ko2 and ko3 i probably think it's more of a, a ko than a sub just from the i mean yes he could sub him if he just quits absolutely quits but i feel like it's more uh attritional probably jab his face off if he can't get him down i think the rsa um takedown defense is pretty good um I do feel like you're like you. I do agree with you that the in round one, um, Herbert's gotten some guys down and subbed some guys that are really fucking tough. So I, I feel like that is that is his path. I just can't get the vision out of my head of his brother carrying him out of the ring and how badly he's quit in fights over and over and over. So it's kind of like a system play to bet against him in round two and three. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. I mean it's it's not a bad play at all i mean if if you know most likely he doesn't finish early he's probably going to be in big trouble i mean most likely i'm not sure let's go over to chat a little i haven't mentioned our chat here at all let's see what they got tg ebo should spark anton yeah i mean he he should doesn't mean he will bazooka has a only fans fade give me matthews dixon with his only fans fade joshua says weird how many fighters miss weight going up yeah, I mean, it's bad. He he fought at 45 before. Our safe face looked so distraught in the faceoffs. Um, Herbert going to sub him 1-2. Yeah, it could be 2-2. Two, two. Tim, I dig it. Our safe has a chance to finish to recoup the money he was lost. No, you don't get – when you miss weight, you don't get any bonuses. So you're not recouping shit. Yeah, you um, can't get bonus. Only, only win bonus you get. You get the win bonus. So that – he's not going to get 50K. He can't. When you miss weight, you're, you're not allowed to get any bonuses. So – um, smash the like guys show some love like azure said and we will move on here fight number seven it is in the straw weight division it is the 19 and three verna jandy roba versus the 12 and three lupita godonez and this one's yours tim this is a interesting fight i am interested to see how this fight plays out um lupi when she first came in the ufc wasn't known for her like i i 
the first couple fights, she wasn't like, oh, this is she's a wrestler and da 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 da. Everybody was like hyping her boxing and like that she's a, you know she's got good hands and she's you good really good stand up and crisp and moves her feet really well. And then they started watching her fight and they're like. And Loopy's one of the most elite uh, wrestlers in the in the division, and uh, everything the narrative just changed on her big time. Um, and then she's now she's going up against Verna, who I'm pretty sure Verna's going to be bringing out the double knee brace in this one. Uh, just seems to seems to have like seems to have some really bad knees at this stage in the game. I think you you're going to pre- you know put a little bit more detail on that, but as to when she has surgeries and if she if, if both of them or something like that, I'm pretty sure. But to me, I feel like for for Loopy, this is the best wrestler and best grappler that she's ever fought. And I think it's by a decent amount. So I'm kind of worried for her early in the fight that if she if she's stupid and Loopy, like her name, then she tries to take Verna down or she tries to like engage in grappling with her. Because I think if she gives if she gives uh, Verna chances on the ground, I do think that Verna is live for a sub early in round one or round two. Um, the decision equity for, for Loopy is the most com like the most likely outcome for me, but it's, it's like a minus 150, which is just stupid. Um, and we won't even really try to talk about that on this show. So to me, I think it's like round one, round two sub for Verna or KO three, um, maybe KO two, three for, for Loopy. But I really, honestly, I feel like the the main finishing upside is is uh, either a round three KO, just absolute attritional judges. Uh, the ref is just like sick of watching Verna get her face punched. It's not even like she, not, I don't think she like knocks her down and like anything like that. I just think that she volumes her up. Um, so I, I'll give, honestly, I want to give like two on this one. I'll give sub one for Verna and KO three for Loopy. I think that those are both very live. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, you mentioned uh, Verna. I'll give a little bit of what happened. So she pulled out of her last fight. Um, she had surgery on her knees, both knees. I don't know how the fuck you have surgery on both knees, but she had surgery on both knees. Um, apparently, I, I did like some checking on her history. This is like the sixth or seventh knee surgery this Ooh. lady's had. So um, that's part of the reason when you watch her come into the cage, she always has double knee braces all the time. That's because she has she's had multiple surgeries and now she had two more. Um, and those surgeries, guys, were like seven months ago. You know, double knee surgery seven months ago. Um, for a girl that's you know pushing 36 now, she's gonna be 36 here in about a, two months. And you know, she's looked atrocious in some round threes. I mean, it, it's it it just is what it is, you know. Uh Mackenzie Dern fight. Looked horrible in round three. Marina Rodriguez fight looked horrible in round three before she got the takedown. Amanda Ribas fought looked horrible again in round three. Like every time these fights get extended, round three is a disaster for this lady. Now, in a lot of these fights, though, she's getting takedowns, right? She's getting takedowns. She's getting these girls down. She's working them a little bit. So let's play devil's advocate a little here. How about if she fucking shoots for these takedowns but doesn't get them now, right? Against Loopy, who's a strong wrestler. Now she's gassed and zapped from getting takedowns and being on top. What happens when she fucking gets pieced up on her feet, cannot get a takedown, right? And it's round three and she's death gassed again. Literally, what happens? So, dude, round three Godonias on, on 365 is 2,200 alone. Plus 2,200. And then if you play Loopy KO3, it's like 3,300. Well, guess what? It is the whisper bet of the week. Loopy Godinez by KO, round three. Um, Play the round three and then sprinkle the KO. Because honestly, Jandaroba, I don't know if it's this fight, but it's going to happen. She's going to get finished in round two or three coming up. I don't know when it's going to happen to her because... Dude, she's looked awful in round threes. And now coming off double knee surgery, I'm going to have to freaking fade this this lady in round three, man. I, I really do. I mean, she gets takedown. She's dangerous. But if she doesn't. Do you, do you think uh, Do you think that, like, 
probably Loopy's probably like the second or third best wrestler that she's faced. She it's obviously Carla's obviously a better wrestler. As far as is a better wrestler, maybe Murata's probably around the same level, maybe yes, a little but, bit better. But she didn't get Murata down. Murata took her down and then got her arm broke. Yes. She didn't yeah. take Murata down, right? Yeah. So yeah. okay. And then our Sparza out wrestled her, right? Completely. Yeah. So it's like Let's see what happens. Like, okay, you know, I know she's getting some of these girls down. Um, but man, this is gonna be her toughest matchup. And then guess what? The other thing is this girl has good wrestling, has good takedown defense, but is better striker by miles than the other two, right? Murata can't strike, she's a fucking wrestler. And the, the other chick, Esparza, doesn't even know what a punch is. You know, all she does is wrestle. So it's like Okay, um, I'm gonna take my shot here, man. You know, I I uh, I really like her. I, you know, I I would suggest you sprinkle. I always sprinkle two as well. Yes, plus twenty eight. I was gonna literally say the same thing. Plus twenty eight hundred on. Yeah, KO2. you have to sprinkle two too. You have to do it too. But, but yeah, I'm playing both of them, man. I I think she might break her to be honest. I, I really do. If 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 the stuff takedowns come early, I'm gonna feel really good about the KO. Honestly, um. Yeah, let's move on. 314 live viewers. Appreciate you guys. 178 on X, 136 on YouTube. Smash the like, retweet it. Let's get this up to 400 and we will move on. Fight number eight in the featherweight division. It is the 17 and five, Nate Landwehr versus the 20 and seven, Jamal Emmers. And here's Emmers back, you know, um, off a big first round KO. Um, looked really good. I mean, the guy is really skilled. Let's be honest. Emmers is a skilled fighter. He can grapple. He can, he can strike. He's long. Um, he's got good boxing. He's got good jujitsu. He's just a good all around fighter, right? The one thing that he kind of lacks a little bit is fight IQ, right? He does stupid things sometimes. Um, you know, took him forever to shoot takedowns against Giga. I have no idea why. Like, okay, you want to strike with a glory kickboxer? Not a good idea. It took him until round three to start grappling. And we saw how easy it was to grapple, right? It's like, dude, what were you doing for two rounds? Why are you striking? Then he knocks down Pat Sabatini. And then he decides, let's go fucking ankle lock, heel hook against heel hook against a very, very good uh, grappler. And what happens? He gets heel hook. Another stupid decision, right? Now he faces a guy in Nate Landwehr who's just going to absolutely make it a fucking war. He's going to make it a mess. Um, the guy has very good takedown defense. He's got good submission skills. Um, you know, he's a well-rounded fighter as well, man. This guy has a ton of experience um, in the regionals, in the UFC. The guy's just really, really tough. He's durable. Um, you know, he gets dropped. He gets cracked. But, man, he comes back, man. He's extremely tough. And <clears throat> I said it recently, man, in the other fight. I don't really think Emmers hits that hard. Like, what Onama did to... Um, Landwehr, I don't think Emmers could do. Like, I don't think Emmers hits as hard as Onama does. So the thing here is, um, for me, I think this is a kind of a... So Landwehr fights, when they go to decision, they're close, man. He makes it an absolute war. And I'm not going to touch split because it's low. I know you were shaking your head like you're going to play split. But I'm going to just play Landwehr decision, man. It's 450. Nate Landwehr, by decision, is 4-5-0. I don't think he's finishing Emmers. Emmers is tough to finish. I'll tell you that. And I don't think Emmers is finishing him, to be honest. So if you want to take Nate, then maybe sprinkle the split. What's the split, Tim? Sorry, guys. That's going to be one of mine. Yeah, 11-1. to one. Yeah, I mean, fine. 450, sprinkle the 11-1, to one and let's ride. What do you got here, Tim? Yeah, I I agree with everything you said. I think that um, Emmer's just is extremely talented in every realm of MMA, but he just has that choosing the most irrational game plans at, at certain fights where you just and just reacts poorly. Almost it's like it's almost like he's like super confident in his game that he could fuck with anybody in any in any realm so then he's like oh i'll, I'll handle it no worries I'm, I'm talented enough to do it I, I get people that i coach in tennis that do this shit all the time and it's because they're talented at something that they think that they could go into somebody else's wheelhouse and it's like what are you doing like so 
that that uh, Sabatini fight was probably one of the worst decisions I've ever seen. But we see it all the time: guys knock guys down and then go straight in their guard and get sub. So, yeah, um, for me, it's it's end split plus four hundred. Nate by split eleven to one. I, I scratched out the Nate by points because you put it in there, but I had that down as well. I, I think that those are the best plays. I do think the fight goes um, probably a decent amount of like land. We're just vol- like just spamming volume and Emmer's trying to be a little bit cleaner with his techniques. Yeah. I mean, it should be, it should be a nice, uh, nice little fight here. Honestly, probably one of the best fights of the night or close to it. Moving on fight. Number nine. It is in the middle. Uh, sorry. No welterweight division. It is the 22 and 10 newborn Chitty and Jaquani versus the 13, five and one Reese McKee. Tim, we got Skeletor. We got Bang Bang. What do you have for us? All right. So I think uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a outsider. Like this is this is kind of like a hot take for me on this fight. I, I I think everybody thinks that this fight finishes and that it's you know early Chidi and late McKee, which I completely get. Like from both fighters, have shown that's. A, a definitely a methodical way that they fight and that there's uh, there's evidence based on that for sure. Um, what I will say though, is I feel like Chidi is a guy that you don't know which Chidi you're going to get. Sometimes you're going to get a guy that volumes guys up and stays at range. And sometimes you're going to get him just coming absolutely full rabies mode at you early and Other times you're going to get him fucking doing fuck all and doing absolutely nothing in a fight. And you're going to wonder what the hell, what the hell just happened. So he's very, very inconsistent with what style he fights. And you just really don't know what you're going to get. I think in this fight, I think that he's seven and two in decisions. Chidi is and uh, Reese is Oh, three and one in decisions. And to me, I just feel like if this fight goes and Chidi lasts and stays at range with him, I think he can just piece him up. Uh, standing at range and just jab him up and and just watch him come into range and hit him, get out of the way. Just don't engage in the firefight. I don't think that Reese is going to be like strong enough physically to take him down over and over and over. Um, I do feel like a lot of guys that do make Chidi quit will do that as well. Um, And, or just have like insane power in one shot and they can hurt him. And then once he feels that power, he just kind of quits. Um, I, I just feel like Chidi by decision here at eight to one is is a really good look. Him by split decision is uh, twenty two to one. So I'm going to go with those and uh, and hope that this fight goes to decision because I think that if it does go to the cards, I think he's uh, very likely to win. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and it's it's hard for me to see this go to decision, man, because because the problem I I think is like you know how you're saying like Chidi just like stay on the outside and do fuck all. And, but like, I don't think uh, Reese McKee will allow you kind of to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like he's like pressuring, like he's going to make it a war. Like that's just how every single one of his fights. Like I, I haven't watched a Reese McKee fight on his tape. That hasn't been an absolute war. Like every single one is like back and forth. He's getting hurt. He's hurting them. And it's, and it's like all of a sudden now I, I, it's hard for me to see that man, because I really think, um, Chitty can hurt him early very bad and probably goes for the kill. And if he doesn't get the kill, he's going to probably be killed. And it's one of those fights. You know what I'm saying? Um, I did take Chitty at like minus 140. I just think the skill edge is so, so big here between these two guys. Like Chitty's so much better everywhere. Um, but I mean, we're going right back to this, you know, to this well of cardio, man. Like the cardio aspect of this fight, like, it's, I have to favor McKee, right? This guy at 170, I know he made weight. I know he looked fucking fantastic, but he's been gassing out at 85. What makes me think he doesn't gas out at 70? You know what I'm saying? It's like against a pressure fighter, against a guy that gets going to keep coming forward. Um, 750 and 1400 on bet, bet rivers, um, two, three on McKee. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, can I don't want people to think that Njaquani's round one or bust because I do think he can knock you out in round two as well mm-hmm. or round one. Um, but yeah, if it goes further than that, dude, like 
it's probably bad news for him, honestly. Like, he's probably starting to break. And- yeah, that's that's where I feel like I don't disagree with you that I don't think that he I don't think that Reese will be able to or will allow him to do fuck all in this fight. But I do think that hit Reese's style, if he is taking a more of a like countering approach to fighting him and just moving his feet and like he could he could just hurt him all fight like he could just get the much bigger shots and be elusive much much better than defensively more responsible than than Reese's. So I just feel like if. If he wins the first two rounds, like if he wins the first round and a half or first two rounds to me, it's just like, all right, please survive, <laughs> obviously. But that's where that's where your bet in Reese comes in. So like if, if I'm betting, you know, if I'm betting both of these bets, like I feel like hedging on the the, the two, three or like maybe even just the three for me on uh, on Reese isn't a bad look. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on. Fight number 10. It is in the featherweight division. It is the 18 and seven Bill Algio. Versus the 15, 5, and 1, Kyle Nelson. And when we talk about 2, 3, this is the one I really like. Um, I, I, I honestly, um, if you ask me, like, one of your favorite props, what is it this week? It's Bill Algio, 2, 3, man. It really is. It's 900, 1,200. Um, this is a bad stylistic matchup, in my opinion, for Kyle Nelson. This is very similar to Billy Corinthio fight. This is a guy that will keep coming in Bill Algio. This is a guy that... Even if you take him down, he's going to make your ass work and he's going to get right back up. Um, And then he's going to be the longer guy here. I just, man, I I just think this is a terrible matchup for, for, um, for Kyle Nelson, man. I think he's going to break him. You know, Kyle Nelson, I'm going to tell you guys, like in his recent fights, he's had actually pretty good matchups. Like, okay, Duhu Choi, you know, guy coming off 10 year layoff or whatever the heck it was. Um, but he doesn't really push a pace, right? First fight back, Blake Builder just sits on the outside, does fuck all. You want to talk about fuck all? That's a guy that does fuck all. And then you got Fernando Padilla, who absolutely didn't do nothing in the fight, just stood on the outside and did nothing, right? So in those type of fights, fine, Kyle Nelson's great. I played him against Padilla, you know? I played him against Builder at a big underdog, but not again. you cannot do that against Algio. He's going to keep fucking coming forward. And the only guys that have beaten Aljo, Tim, and I went back through every loss, have been grapplers. Guys that have taken him down multiple times. Even if Kyle Nelson decides to wrestle, he's going to gas himself out. So 2-3 is probably one of my favorite props on this whole card on Aljo. Um, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood, depending where you look. If you really, really look, I think you can find like 900 somewhere. 912. Um, yeah, 9 and 12 on Algio. I I think they're being a little generous with those, to be honest. Uh, I like him there. And, you know, what way does he finish? I kind of feel like it's KO over sub. What do you have to yeah, the only I mean, I, I'm on the exact same props. I agree with you that these are two of the best props for the weekend. Just in general, before the last few fights, everybody the, the narrative on Nelson was like he's he's gassing, he gasses, he quits, uh, he's there to be hit. Um, like you said, his path in this fight is to grapple. If he does that, he'll probably maybe have success in the first round getting him down, but he's not going to have much success after that. The only place where I disagree is maybe disagree a little bit is that I think that the sub is also live uh, for Algio in this fight that in a bad takedown just reverses gets a neck you know it just i just can see him shooting a really really sloppy takedown after being punched in the face too many times so i don't i don't think that it's like you know a huge 80 20 or 70 30 i think it's like 60 40 i would lean sub but i i honestly don't care because i'm going to take round two and three and just cover both bases yeah makes sense let's move on fight number 11 it is in the Middleweight division. It is the 33, 8, and 2, Nur Sultan, Ruzoboyev versus the 9 and 1, Cedrikis Dumas or Dumbass, whatever you want to call him. Um, Timothy, this one's yours. Yeah, I've been calling him Dumbass every fight. He seems to be a really high character guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, man. It's it's pick your poison on Ruzoboyev by KO or Ruzoboyev by sub in rounds one or two. Um, I'll lean KO a little bit, kind of 60-40. 
I do think that if if Dumbass has success taking him down, I think that he will be like Kamura or subbed and be reversed in in a pretty bad fashion. Um, neither one of these guys, to me, I think has good cardio. So I think I don't think that there's like a a big edge in in round three. I do think that it's possible that somebody could get a finish in round three as well if either one of them gas. But it, it might even go if it gets to round three, just because it might be a slop fest at that point. Um, so I'll take a, I'll take a shot on uh, Ruzabayev by KO is like plus three hundred or three ten, and KO one is five hundred, KO two is plus thirteen hundred. I think if he gets him out, it's probably in the first ten minutes. Yeah, I have Ruzabayev KO. It's three ten. Um, I just I watch Dumas, and I don't think he reacts too well to punches. Um, Ruzabayev has serious serious power power in his hands. I know he has a lot of subs. But that's because when he touches people, they like automatically shoot and take him down. He has terrible takedown defense, and then he Kamoras or what does this whatever. But um, I think he's gonna make this guy crumble. To be honest, he's gonna touch him once, and and finally, you know, we have a guy here. You know, usually, um, you know, Dumas the bigger guy. He's not the bigger guy. <laughs> you know, he's not the bigger guy here. So um, yeah, I mean, Rizzo Boyov. A lot of people are saying fraud, this and that, like. I wouldn't say fraud. I mean, I would say his takedown defense is terrible. Yes. But is his striking fraudulent? Like, no, I, I think his striking is good, man. And and he has like he has like these weird fucking long limbs and he gets like Kimuras and all types of I mean, you know, people people like scan his um his topology page and or wherever you're finding it and say, Oh, yeah, he's fought nothing but bums, you know. Um He's padded his record, but like if you go deep into his record, like way before, he's actually has some really good wins, man. Um, he knocked out Artem Reznikov, who's an absolute fucking animal, um, early in his career. So, you know, that's a big win in my eyes. You know, um, that's not like some slouch guy there that he knocked out. Um, even even a guy like Artem Kazbanov is is good, good fighter. So um, he does have some good wins early in his career. Now, albeit that's been a long time ago, but dude, um, I don't like what Dumas has looked like against like, like Frem, bro. Frem dropped him, hurt him a couple of times. I didn't like that look at all against Josh Frem, who's really not a big hitter. So, um, yeah, man, KO plus three ton here. Um, there's, you know, I don't know. I, I don't even want to say it happens first, second. I, I don't know, but. I'm just going to take up the straight up KO. Moving on. Fight number 12. It is in the middleweight division. It is the 23 and 10 Bruno Silva versus the 15 and 7 Chris Weidman. And I will go here, Tim. Um, I like submission. I already played that. Um, the number has gone down. It's like 750 now. But I like 2 3. I think you can get those like 1500, 2200. That's when, that's when I think the sub really happens, honestly. I don't think it's when. Silva's fresh, like early. I think it's when he's a little bit tired. And and honestly, you know, I listened to the interview uh, on Weidman on the, um, not Ariel Hawani show. What's that guy? Is it Ariel Hawani? The guy that does uh, the show every week? Yeah. Is it Ariel Hawani? Yeah. So he had him on. He had him on and, and um it was a long interview like 30 minutes and they kind of asked him you know what happened your knee injury you know got destroyed last fight which it did um and he said he's been taking these pills from some indian doctor that gave them to him now i don't know what pills they are but he said his knees have felt the best they've ever felt for a very very long time he said he doesn't feel soreness in them he doesn't ache and pain in them he feels really good training every day he feels explosive like he can explode all over again into his you know I'm, I'm assuming explode into takedowns, he means. Um, and he knows what he has to do against this guy, man. Like, he has to grapple, right? And Chris is a very fucking decorated grappler and wrestler, man. So I think he can get this guy later, honestly. Uh, Silva does slow down. Um, we saw Gerald Mearshart drop him and, and finish him later. Um, I think Weidman can finish him later, man. 1,500, 2,200? Why fucking not? You know what I'm saying? Um and then sprinkle the sub two three. What do you have here, Tim? The exact same thing. Sub plus uh, seven fifty, I think, is on uh, Bet Rivers, and uh, 
sub two three sub is even two three is fine plus fifteen hundred plus twenty two hundred if you wanted to do this the sub two is plus twenty three hundred sub three is plus thirty one hundred I think those are all all solid just go basic sub uh, plus seven fifty is also really really good um, the the ch only thing I would add is I think that the chin narrative on Weidman is a little bit fucked like which which KO I think there is one KO or two if you include a leg break that's like one shot or like a, oh he, he gets meme need by Romero and then maybe the jockery one was like only a few shots but other than that it's like brutal beatdowns that he's taking and he's getting his ass fucking kicked before he finally gets knocked out so it's not like it's one shot bonk like we're talking about like Malcolm Gordon or you know fucking Matt Schnell or something like that where he's just getting jabbed and then you're uh, Julian Arosa and he gets jabbed and you're like what just happened so I think that that narrative is a little bit off. So I, I like the sub prop for Weidman. I hopefully, hopefully he cashes it for us. Yeah, I think a lot of people are on the sub prop. I hit it like very, very early. I think you could have got a thousand on Hard Rock. That obviously went away, and and um, a lot of people hit this. It's like four fifty and something. I would not play it, guys. I would not play it at four fifty. Absolutely no, awful. That's awful. Um, let's move on. Fight number thirteen. It is in the welterweight division. It is the 22-9-1 Vicente Luque versus the 17-6 and Joaquin Buckley. Tim, let's kick this one off with 376 live viewers. This is – this fight has a lot of different iterations in my mind as the ways that it can go, um, mainly because I don't know which Luque we're going to see in the ring. Um he show, he's shown hist historically that he struggles with southpaws a decent a decent amount. Um, doesn't seem to be able to get the footwork against him. Doesn't seem to be able to find the spots to be able to attack. Um, so I think that's going to be tough for him in this fight. If if uh, he comes out with a grapple heavy game plan, I don't. I mean, Buckley is not like phenomenal wrestler he's a good enough wrestler that he could probably stuff some takedowns and he's physically a beast so i'm not sure that it's going to be like super easy for him to just grapple fuck him like he did rda rda was also small coming up in that division um so to me i just feel like I feel like this fight is close and i feel like you know the obviously the question is where is the brain at this point with luke is he is he fighting with a, just a damaged brain in the head that's like you know, he takes a shot and he's just fucking going to die. So that's always a question. But to me, I feel like the the volume, if he can deal with the the, the left, the, the southpaw, and he can, de like, get the footwork down and kind of find the range, I do feel like the the volume will be there for Luke. I do feel like uh, the kicks will be there for him as well. I feel like he's just an all-around kind of, like, just a better, more all-around type striker. I feel like... Buckley's going to be relying on some moments to, to connect on him. Um, and so I'm going to take a shot at ends by split at plus 600. Um, Luke by split is plus 1400. Luke by points is plus 500. I don't hate any of those. Even Buckley by split is 10, 10 to one. So if you're taking a shot on the end split, I think it could be, I think this could be a very close fight if, if it goes. So I'll take a shot on the ends by split and the uh, probably the iterations of the Luke split and Luke points. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I gave this one out earlier in the week. Um, Luke decision is plus 500. Um, I kind of doesn't really make sense to me just for the, I, I, well, listen, the fight goes is like what plus money, uh, decent plus money, but like Luke decision for me, it's like, okay. I know the guy is three and six in decisions, but like, who is he losing to decisions against? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, he throws more volume than Buckley. He has, in my opinion, a grappling edge on Buckley. Um, why Why is his decision line like plus 500 and Buckley's is like, Buckley's is like, I, I don't know what it is, like plus three? Not even maybe. Plus 300. Yeah, like why plus is it 200 points? Why is it 200 points off? Like I, it makes no sense to me. I, I think decision line... His should be actually lower than Buckley's because I think possibly Buckley has more finishing equity here just because he's the younger guy. He's more explosive. You know what I'm saying? But why is his decision line like bigger? 
So, um, yeah, man, um, it's plus 500. Like, I could see Luke even land takedowns here. It's not like it's not like Buckley can't be taken down, guys. Like, fucking, what's his name was taking him down, for Christ's sake? Uh, what's that kickboxer? Yeah, the French. Um, can't think of his name. Not the French guy. Not the French guy. Abdul Razak Hassan. He was taking He took him down multiple times. And that guy's a, you know, he's a he's a kickboxer. So I could see Luke taking him down here. I know, you know, Buckley has looked good at 170. And, but we have to kind of step back. And it, it was Fialio and Morono. So it's like, okay, fine. Now this is a pretty big step up for him, you know. And to be fair, and this is pre pretty much very fair, Every time he stepped up, he's lost. Every time he stepped up in competition, Buckley has lost. You know, look at his wins. They're not really great. Duraev, Al Hassan, Arroyo, Jordan Wright. You know, um, he stepped up against Imavov, lose. Step up against Curtis, knocked out. This is a step up. Luke is not a joke. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take decision here, plus 500. Fight to end in split, Tim. 600. Yeah, that's what I was when not I said. Yeah, that's what I was yeah, saying. Not a bad look. Really good look. All right. We're up to almost 400 viewers here. 398 guys. Please hit the like down below. Um, if you are happy with our content, leave, leave us uh, some comments, anything, concerns, whatever you want. Talk shit to me. I know I always get that every week uh, after I upload the video to you, if they're uploads to YouTube. Um, one last thing. Down below is my Discord uh, dub club. You can hit that link. Um, if you, I actually tweeted out a 25% off code um, for one month if you want to try it out. Uh, it's there. It's on my Twitter. Um, I mean, guys, you won't regret it. Just, just from live betting alone, it's been freaking crazy. 10-0 the last two weeks in live bets. So um, with that being said, let's move on. Main event of the night. And it is in the flyweight division. It is the 12 and 1 Aaron Blanchfield versus the 11 and 1 Manan Firo. And, you know, it's it's debatable that these girls possibly don't even have losses. You know, both of their losses are very close, um, debatable losses. I think, I honestly think maybe both girls won those fights in their losses. So it's debatable that both girls are uh, undefeated at this point. Uh, we have a young. Hungry prospect in Aaron Blanchfield, who's only 24 years old. Manan Faro, 10 years older. Um, you know, not a lot of experience for, for a girl that, you know, is 34. But, man, she's a talented striker. She's an absolute unit. Um, and this is a fight of, of, of basically can Aaron Blanchfield take this fight to the ground? There's no other way of looking at this fight, to be honest. Like, can she get this fight to the ground. The one thing I will say is watching back, and I watched it again today, this morning, watching back the uh, last fight for Aaron Blanchfield, she didn't really get takedowns, right? She still won the fight. She still won the fight against a very, very, very good striker. And a, and a girl that's an absolute unit herself, right? Talia Santos is a unit. And she, to, to me, she hits much harder, actually, than... Manan Fro, like her punches are way stronger. Like she throws with venom. And I didn't remember this. Like I watched it way earlier in the week. Maybe I skipped it a little. I don't know what I did, but I didn't remember, you know, her having that much success on the feet, man. She, she actually had success. And in, in round three, she was landing decently well, especially towards the end. I think she has a massive cardio edge, dude. I really, I mean, watching Fro in round threes and these round threes, she is slowing down a whole hell of a lot. She's circling, running more than any other round. You know, looking at the Rose fight, in the at the three minute mark of round one, number one, she messed up her hand. I, she she went right away. She was playing with it. Three minute mark of round one, she started only using one hand for the whole freaking round, dude. Like she couldn't punch. She was like worried. And Rose, we know, is already a mental midget. And that happened in the middle of the fight. I was like, oh, she's toast, right? But she still won round three, Tim. And it was like, oh, my God. Like, okay, hold on a second. Now we have a five-round fight. And 
This girl's going to make you work, man. She's going to make her try to stuff takedowns. I know Faro is very good. She's very good with the wizard. I like that. But guess what, man? Jen just, uh, Jennifer Maya got her down. Jennifer Maya just fucked up a little bit. You know, she tried to jump on her back. She like she didn't take her time. Even though she had a good wizard on, she didn't take her time. She could have kind of ankle picked her instead of like jumping to the back. I don't know what she was doing, but she kind of messed up the position for herself. Blanchfield's, you know, really good as well down there. Like, I mean, if she gets you down, you're probably in big trouble. I feel like the cardio is big here. I don't really know to take a side here, to be honest, with this pricing. But I'm just going to go 4-5 or five here. I do think the fight goes to decision, by the way. I think the fight goes to decision at plus money on some sites is a, a good look here. Because I think both girls are durable. I don't think Manifero is knocking her out unless it's some crazy head kick or flying knee or something nuts. And I don't see Blanchfield honestly really submitting this girl because she looks extremely strong, man. And and she knows what she's doing down there. She's not like a slouch on the ground. I I, I want to say she's a brown belt or even a black belt on the ground for all. So she's not a slouch. So... um. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I think fight goes, but I can't overlook how Faro tires out in three rounders. Now this is a five rounder. This is a girl that's going to push the biggest grappling pace out of any girl she's ever faced, right? No other girl has really pushed a grappling pace. She is going to push a grap. I mean, she shot 14 fucking takedowns in three rounds. Is she still going to be there in round four and five to stuff takedowns? And honestly, think of this. I have a feeling, and I played it too. I have a feeling if Blanchfield finishes in four or five, it's KO over sub, believe it or not. I think it's fucking KO. Like a crucifix. She gets her in a crucifix and just absolutely unloads on her. Doesn't get a fucking sub. And it's like 6,500 or 7,000 in the books. So, yeah, that's another hot take for this, uh, for this card for me. Tim, what do you have here on this banger of a main event? That's a really good breakdown. I, I, I feel like um I feel like the money line side pre is is like Manan, but you can probably bet live on Aaron after a little bit if if she can't get her down early. Aaron's early or her first like four fights in the UFC, she was getting takedowns at like an 80% clip. And I think she's like two for her last 20 in the last three fights. She got two against Andraj. She went oh for like four against uh Aldrich. Still got the sub, took her back, um, and then she went 0 for 14 versus um, what's her face, Talia Santos. Uh, she had eight minutes of control against Santos, so she she does have the ability if she can't get you down to cage push, hold you on the cage, and actually get some damage off in, the, in that position. Um, I think it's going to be harder in this fight to do that versus Manon, especially early, because I don't think that I don't think that the footwork on Santos and Manon are even remotely close. Um, I think Imana is going to be just avoiding the fight and trying to jab her up and just stick and move and stick and move uh, as often as she can and then try to get off of cage as, as, qu as quickly as she can versus her um, so that she can't go for singles and, and trips. Um, but I, I'm kind of like, I, I kind of lean two different two different plays on this. I think that the three, four, five for for Aaron would also be solid plays for me. Um, I don't you know, I don't know if it's KO or sub. I kind of would lean sub, but it's not enough to play the sub three, four, five. And I do agree with you that she's such a good grappler that she could get a dominant position, and it could be you're you're losing a money you're losing money on a bet that you like. What the fuck? Why didn't I just play three, four, five? And those are those are high enough numbers. But I also feel like I feel like the ends by split in this fight at five to one is kind of a surprise to me. I thought that it, I mean honestly, with what we've been seeing on end split lines. I was expecting like 300 to 350 on this one. Five round fight, women's fight, stri striker versus grappler. Like, it just seems like it's like, okay, well, what are they gonna, what are they gonna judge? Are they gonna judge the control again and some some damage on the ground? Or are they gonna give it to the punching and the striking? And you know, to me, I just think that it's always, it's been going the 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 
way of the strikers lately, but it's not consistent. It's totally not consistent. There's sometimes where you'll be like, oh, what the fuck with this guy? And then the next week you're like, wait, last week you just got screwed on this guy because he controlled him for four minutes out of the round and lost. And now the next week this guy wins because he controlled and the guy did nothing. So it's like, I don't know. It's it's such a fucking flip the coin type shit for me on this. I, I think that the ends by split is good at five to one. And I like three, four, five for Blanchfield. So I'd, I'd give them all out there. Yeah. All right. That's all 14 fights, man. We went through a pretty quick hour and five minutes. I like that. I like that. I don't like going crazy. Um, let's go over to our chat a little bit here. What do we got here? Wow. We got a lot of people, a lot of hot takes. Um, Bob Spikerman's in the house. JJ going to try it. What else do we got here? Ben Thrill. Yeah. Um, all right. Tim. Lambo parlays. I'm going to do it a little different this week, man. I'm going to let you go first, but I, I'm going to do it a little different. I gave out all my Lambo plays. You give out your Lambo parlay, and then let's do it a little different. Go ahead. Dude, I need you to I – I, I know which one you're going to say here. I have a feeling I know which one you would vote for, but I need like a culture vote for this one as to which one we would give. Uh, I've got Weidman by sub and Cowlin by sub is 72 to 1. And I got the round robin Arce 2 3, Algeo 2 3. So, okay, so what, what do you want now? Which I would say, what, what would be the vote? Like, what do you think? What, which one of those two do you, do you think Algeo is Algeo 2 3 and who's 2 3? Algeo and Arce. Probably that one. Yeah, I kind of agree. What's the other one? Weidman sub, Cowlin sub. I, mean, I like that. I actually like that one too. I mean, I think Kylan sub is very live. Yeah, I mean, if the, if he gets that, then the, then we're just we're going for the culture bet on Weidman by sub two, which everybody's kind of on. Yeah. So. I don't know. I like I kind of like both. I don't know. All right, so yeah, do them both, guys. We'll do. Give me two this time. Maybe we can hit one. <laughs> all right, all right. So for me, I gave out all my Lambo Lambo uh, plays. Right. I'm going to ask the fucking chat this week. What is their favorite Lambo play that I gave out? Give me two of them, two of them, and I'm gonna go by judging like how many, how many people respond. Please respond in chat. Give me two Lambo plays, and the highest two is the ones I'm gonna take for my. Lambo I know, play. I know what the culture is gonna say, man. Let's I have see a what the culture is gonna say here. That's how I'm gonna do it this week, Tim. They're gonna say they're Come gonna through. say. They have a lot of people three. here. 421 people. Which two do you guys like? I'm this telling you, they're going to go loopy 2-3 loopy. KO combo. I know that's part. Right. It's going to be loopy one by two, three. Okay, Willow says loopy 3. Loopy. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of loopy. Algeo 3. Wow. Let's see what they're, they want to go crazy. Loopy 3, KO 3. We're just going to do loopy 3. We're not going to do KO 3 unless you want to really get crazy. But it looks like loopy. We're going to just do loopy 2-3 here. Um. Oh, you guys just – oh. Algeo 3, Loopy 3. Wow. I actually like Loopy KO better, but you didn't give it out. Yeah, but I don't think it happens early, honestly, Loopy KO. It's got to happen in 2 or 3. It's hard for me to see it um, early. Blanchfield draw. Yeah, that's not one I gave. Crowdsourcing a Lambo. Yeah, what? why not? What's your play, Narrative Nation? Come on. Which one of the Lambo plays that I gave out is your favorite? So we we got Loopy for sure. Loopy KO. No, we're gonna do Loopy round two, round three, and then if you guys want to add the KO, that's fine. Just make it a bigger um, one. Wait, wait, wait. So what is it again? It's Loopy round two, round three, but you can make it KO two, three if you want. Okay, everybody says Algeo two, three. That's what we're gonna do, guys. Fuck it. This is the Lambo Plays podcast chat. Lambo parlay of Loopy round two, round three with Algeo round two, round three. And then, like I said, you want to make it KO, it just becomes that much bigger. But there it is. It's got to be some astronomical numbers, to be honest. I haven't looked, but um, Loopy just alone, two, three is big. Let's see. Let, let's let's run the numbers here. I'm only going to do it on DraftKings. I mean, on, uh, sorry, on... Uh, FanDuel, but if you have if you find better prices, then all by all means go there and do it. Um, 
where's loopy oh there she is loopy round two with oh my god it's 151 152 to one for two two so both round twos is 152 to one i'm playing it right now as we speak and FanDuel doesn't want to let me play it it's too big come on FanDuel. okay then we'll take loopy round two with his round three uh algeo's round three man this this feels good this week that everybody's involved that one is 215 to one we're gonna play that then we're gonna take algeo round three and loopy round three and that makes it 263 to one 263 to one now if you guys want to go play these somewhere else where you can get better prices, then by all means do it. But that's what we're going to do here. Mix and match, 2-3. And I, to be honest, I'm going to mix and match um, the KO for Loopy, 2-3, along with just 2-3 for Algeo. Because I don't know how Algeo is going to get it. He could get it both ways. So, yeah. Thank you very much, guys. I love it. Everybody in chat got involved. Uh, I wanted to change it up this week. I'm like, let me see what... What they're gonna cook up here, and and they they cooked up. They, you were right. They cooked up that Godonias. I didn't think they were gonna cook that one up. You but, knew that was coming, dude. Knew that was yeah, coming. I, I didn't know it. Uh, yeah, four different bets. Correct, Terry. Four different bets. You round robin, basically, not round robin, but you play two, three on each one, so you get four different bets there. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, George. Thank you very much, man. Um, you are a great guy. Thanks for following. Thank you for. Uh, the subscription there. Um, I try to do my best in there. So um, we're going to get it even better, man. I'm, I'm getting a, a somebody that's going to run the Discord a little better now. So um, we're going to make it more professional. Um, we're getting a lot more people. So we're going to have to make it look better and and, and more organized. So um, Tim, do you have a show tomorrow with uh, Sean? I have not heard back from him. I'm assuming not, but we'll see. So no show tomorrow, I'm assuming. Sean has been MIA, lost in the woods. Do um, um, you have anything else going on? No. Nope. Um, all right, guys. Thank you very, very much. 435 still in here. I appreciate you guys. Hit the like down below. Um, hope you guys have a great and profitable weekend. One last thing. Let's cash those tickets for UFC Atlantic City. See you all tomorrow.